Hello team. As you've heard from our Department of Defense and Air Force leadership, they're asking us to take some time to discuss some ideologies that run counter to our service as members of the military. Now these discussions are not an attempt to dictate how anybody thinks. Our role here is really just to promote healthy ways of expressing our First Amendment rights while also maintaining our trust uh, from the public and unit cohesion. Chief, you had an opportunity to do this training last week. What did you get out of it? I did, sir. Down at Lackland, thank you for that. Um, we had a lot of really good conversations when I had the opportunity to participate in, and in that small group discussion. One of the key concepts you just hit on with cohesion, and to me that brings forward one word, and we came to agree on that as a group for sure, and that was unity. Uh, and I think unity and cohesion, that's, that's what we're trying to get after here is that we need to be together as a team. Uh, some of the conversations did t start to spiral off just a little bit uh, on some off-topic discussions, but we're able to recenter and focus our group. To frame our discussion, I think it's important to, to cover definition of extremism so that we know exactly what we're talking about. DOD and Air Force instructions define it as a common belief which might otherwise be politically or socially acceptable, but which espouses the use or threat of force or violence to obtain their goals. When you look at that definition, you can see easily that this is not compatible with military service. It's also important to discuss how otherwise faithful military members might end up participating in some of these organizations. To me, it comes down to two words, ethical drift. And ethical drift is the slow and insidious departure from the norms. So really you don't understand or even realize sometimes that you're starting to step away from ethical or moral centers. We all took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And this goes beyond just the document itself, but also the ideals upon which the framers built it. The American public puts a lot of trust in the military. One of the reasons for that is we possess a lot of coercive might and they need to know that we're never going to turn that on them. It's supposed to be used in their defense. When we have members of the military engaging in extremist activities and the public sees that, that erodes that trust and makes them wonder, would we ever turn that on them? Trust within the service also erodes when extremist behavior, language, and memorabilia make their way into our organizations. We need to be able to trust the other military members standing next to us working towards our common goal. Uh, we need to operate with dignity, respect, and that trust in others that we can stand next to each other to complete the mission. In your discussions, these concepts will serve as your backdrop but we have multiple goals we're trying to meet today. The first is reviewing the meaning of the oath of office. The second is that we want to understand what behaviors are permissible and which ones are impermissible when we're exercising our First Amendment rights. We'll also spend some time reviewing the responsibilities we have for reporting these infractions to our chain of command. Also, we'll focus on being able to identify these infractions so that we can maintain integrity within our ranks. Then we'll finish with some listening sessions and small group discussions to talk about these points. As you move into your discussions, I'll leave you with a final thought, and I'm going to borrow it from the Military Code of Conduct. I will never forget that I am an American, fighting for freedom, responsible for my actions, and dedicated to the principles that made my country free. Thank you for tackling this difficult topic. It's absolutely vital to our job of guarding our country and our way of life.